In the previous video we have laid out all of our components and now we are going to see how can we get the input from our user. For that first I'm going to create an empty game object so go under game object and click on create empty and I'm going to name this game object game controller and now in our scripts folder create a c-sharp script so right click create and then click on c-sharp script and name it game controller also and attach that script on our game object and I'll simply double click it so Mana Develop will open it here. So this is that script. Here we are going to write the code that's going to get the input from our user. First I'm going to delete all of these, well start and update function. And now I'm going to create a public void function and this is going to be get input. Now what we need to do here is we need to attach a game object on our input field. So here, if we click on the input field, go here in the inspector panel and scroll down, we'll have this on value change and this end as edit, excuse me. And both of these take a parameter string, which we see here in these parentheses. Now, in order to add a function as a listener to our input field, that function needs to be a public void function. And also here we need to type string, which is the guess. So here I will name it guess parameter because we need to, well, specify here a string as we see. Now, in order to add this function, we can click on this plus button here. And now we need to drag a game object. And that's why I've created this empty game object. So here we need to drag game object. And here on this drop down list, we can select all of the scripts that are attached on our game object. So here we have our game controller script. And now we can select our function. So here we have our get input function. Now we are not going to select it here where I'm pointing with my mouse. We need this dynamic string. So in order for this to work, make sure that you go here under dynamic string and here select this get input function. So now if I go back in my script, I can simply debug.log and we can see or print in the console what the user will enter. And here we can simply say you entered and we can say plus guess in order well to get this parameter, which is what the user will type in our input field. So if I run the game now, and now we have our input field. And if I type something, so let's say this is a guess. If I hit enter, we're going to see here in the console printed out, you entered, this is a guess, which we well have programmed here. So we are using debug.log and this is how can we actually print to the console and debug our application if we have any problems. So in this short video, I just wanted to show you how can we use this well, function in order to attach it on our game object and print in the console what the user writes. So one other thing that I'm going to do here is we see here that when we type something, so in our case, this is a guess, this stays right here. So let's say this is another guess and I hit enter. So this right here stays. Let's say that we want to remove this text when we hit enter so the user does not need to, well, delete this text and after that enter another text. How can we do that? Well, for that we need to create here a, well, input field. But before that, in order to use the UI components, we need to type here under using system.collections, we need to type using Unity UI. And there are a couple of ways to get components. So here I'm going to type private input field and let's say input. I'm going to name this variable input. Here in my void awake function, and this is a function of mono behavior, and this is the first function that's going to be called when we well run the game. And here usually we set up initial values. Now in order to get this input, what we can do is we can say input, so input is equal to game object dot find, and we specify the name of our game object that we want to find in our scene. If we go here in our well program, we see that we have this input field, which is the name of our game object. So we can well copy the name, go back here, and here I can type this as a string input field. And this will find me that game object in the scene. And now what I can do here, I can simply say input, so 
input.text is equal to an empty string when we get the text from our user. So now I can go back in Unity and let me just see here what we have and also one thing that I well made a mistake is that we need to type get component here and here we need to pass our input field because we are getting the game object so this right here the whole input field is a game object but we need this input field script and for that I need to type get component and specify excuse me this input field so excuse me for this well mistake and now if I go back in my Unity and if I run the game and let's say this is a guess. If I hit enter, we will see this printed out in the console, but the text will be removed from our input field. So we see that we don't have the text anymore. And we can type here, this is another guess and hit again. And we see that that is printed out in the console, but we don't have it in our input field anymore. And one other way, how can we also, well, attach our input field and get a reference to it is instead of using this right here, so I'm just gonna comment this line out. And by the way, this is a comment, this will not be compiled. So just type these double backslashes and this is how can you document your code. So here I'm going to type serialize field above this private input field. And now I can go back in my Unity editor and select my game controller and here we have this input which is now here in the inspector and I can simply drag and drop this input field right here and this will give me a reference to it so if I run the game now and here I type this is a guess if I hit enter this will be printed in the console and we will not see this in our input field so we see that this is printed in the console and our text is gone. So this is another way how can we get or attach our components from our hierarchy panel to our script and use them in our code.